Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Dominic, and this remains the Renegade 3v3 tournament recap. We're on to round four. It's going to be Team Pluck versus Team Mumble. And as with last time, Team Mumble is going to be probably going for that commander setup. But we'll see. I mean, the last game, they went for a unified commander, like, basically went for a squad. It's something this team, the, sorry, the Spring Engine has always been capable of, but we don't see it very often. The interface was added a about a year ago to make it more convenient. And we see it occasionally, and that's what Team Mumble did, and I think they might be doing it again, but I'm not sure since their starting locations are kind of far apart. Sorry, it's this Team Pluck. Team Mumble is actually considerably closer. Team Mumble in blue this time. We have Wesley going for the Tank Factory, Saniac going for the Hovercraft Factory, and Kinetable going for the Spider Factory. While on the other side, we have Isride going for the Airplane Factory, Dying from with Tanks as well, and Shields from Fire Pluck in that proxy position. And actually, at this point... Wow, this is actually positionally an advantage for Team Pluck. Right off the bat, they are set up to more effectively take the map. Now, there is a Maze Push coming in here to try to get rid of Fire Pluck's base, which Fire Pluck, they've got the Rogue Singular. They need more than one Rogue, but they're they are getting that. They're, they're getting the Rogues. As long as they get that, they should survive the Maze, no problem. I mean, the Kodachi coming in here as well to try to destroy the Rogues at close range. They try to dot weave in, kill the Rogue. At the same time, Bandit's coming in here to destroy the Tank Factory. Get rid of the Kodachi that are being built up. Possibly get rid of the Tank Factory. No defenses are available because the Maze is currently up front trying to destroy the base. And that is all it needs to do. Distract by threatening. Gotta love when that works. I mean, it's always a bit of a gamble when you try it, but it's usually a lot more cost-effective to just try to destroy one of your opponent's forces or opponent's factories, which was successful too, no less. Nicely done, Firepluck. So getting rid of a Tank Factory... Instead of losing their base to a mace, because getting rid of the tank factory or threatening the tank factory was a great way of providing a distraction. However, it's also clear enough to the team, well, to Team Mumble, that they might as well try to get rid of stuff that doesn't have rogues next to it, or any kind of skirmishers, which is going to be the opposing tank factory. And that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, I do approve of the way that's been set up. But at the same time, Team Mumble is one factory short. And granted, it's... Oh, it is the Tank Factory. Which, again, at this stage, this is pre-patch, so the Tank Factory is extremely important. The Maze, on the other hand, is also dead. Managing to get only one Metal Extractor in the process. Not really able to do much else. I mean, good for them for not going for the risky strategy of, of trying to get rid of these rogues or trying to get into Firepluck's base, knowing Firepluck could build rogues and easily stop them. But they still didn't manage to do all that much, sadly. So... Yeah. Alright, so at this point, we do have Team Memble. They've got the entire half side, the west side of the map, so that's not bad. I did expect Team Pluck would be taking the map more effectively, but that assault with a mace did actually do enough of a distraction that Kinetable has been able to build up over to the north of the map, and that's, that's good. That's all they really need. They can provide that pressure to make sure they can defend the north of the map, because it is closer to their opponent's factories then it should be fine for Team Mumble to actually maintain an economic parity, if not get an economic advantage. Of course, the Ravens are going to be a bit of an issue there. Can the Flail kill that? Ooh, yes! The Flail managed to kill it. One or two more Flails would not be remiss, but eh, still. It's good to have. The Flail should be able to nail another shot in there, get rid of yet another Raven. So two Ravens down for the price of a couple Scalpels. That's quite effective, honestly. Oof, not managing to get rid of the the Swift, though. Bit of a shame. More of a shame, though, for them is that Fireplug is, is edging in, and nothing's stopping them. They have the Rogues able to stop most Raiders getting in there. There's not a whole lot in the way of... Oh, sorry, the Rogues not stopping the Raiders. The Rogues stopping any Riot units. The Raiders being stopped by all the Lotuses and Pickets. So at this point, what's needed is some kind of Assault Force. Like, get a few Knights. Or maybe not Knights. Get, get Glaives with Knight supports. Or Glaive and Ronin. Actually, Glaive and Ronin would be the best option. Knights would take it too long and be too vulnerable. Knights would help push through the static defense. I guess actually a yeah, Glaive Knight wouldn't be a bad idea now that I think about it. Hmm. At any rate, Knights are asking going on in the back here, though. So, at the very least, Team Humble is able to get rid of some of Izzeride's attempts to expand. That sneaky crane. Almost thought it could get in. Almost thought it could just get free metal, but nope. Team Mumble's still behind, though. They need to get a bit more going for them. They have, they're 5 metal per second behind, which isn't too bad, but their army value is also a little bit lower. 
I mean, Team Pluck has dealt more damage. Team Pluck is in a bit more of a forward position. And is also managing to get rid of the Northwest expansions that were built up sneakily by Kinetable. This is what I was talking about. Kinetable needs to be able to defend that Northern expansion because Dying Throne is right there. At the same time, though, very smart move here with these Glaives. The Airplane Factory doesn't have a whole lot of options to deal with Glaives. Like, it's not... Like, Gunship does, but Airplanes don't. The only real option is Swifts, and it's difficult to build enough of them to be effective. So, very smart move here. Oh, yeah, and the Phoenixes as well, which you don't see built very often. But yeah, Phoenixes are a good option here, but the problem is it wasn't enough. So, nicely done there. And at the same time, Diamond trying to come in here with the Minotaur... It's one shot away from getting rid of the Hovercraft Factory, but it's too far away to hit it. Still, though, Fireplug should be able to get in with the Ronin, no, the Rogues, and no, they don't! Getting pushed back by all the Scalpels, so this factory is gonna live. Saniac's commander should repair that, like, right now. It, that, that needs to be repaired immediately, otherwise it's going down. But if that does get repaired, then that Minotaur is basically doing nothing. At this point, it's not been killed itself, so it's probably fine. But... Yeah, that's still a huge deal. And also, just want to fire plug and complaining about lack of energy. Well, yeah, a lot of that was because these wind generators were destroyed. Like most of the energy was inside of Israel's base, and that was pretty effectively harassed by Kinet by Wesley. So yeah, well done, Wesley. The harassment there. And at this point, yeah, that that's going to be a dead Minotaur. The glaive's coming here to destroy it. And actually, if that pushes back the Glaive Ronin, then it could get rid of everything, but it's not quite. Fireplex Commander under some threat from the Scalpels, but there's enough defenses here that the Scalpels will die in the process of even trying. So that almost worked. So with this, with this whole setup, the board state as it is, I'm not quite sure who has the advantage. I mean... Team Pluck has dealt more damage. Team Team Mumble is slightly better off economically. They definitely have the reclaim to work with. But Team Pluck is still pushing in hard. It's just a matter of whoever gets in one more really good harassment. Like if someone gets in a few good shots, getting rid of a few metal extractors, maybe some power generators, that could probably push it over the edge. However, the Cyclops is another thing. If that gets built up, that's also going to push it over the edge. And that is not an option that the Western team, that Team Mumble, has up their sleeve. So all they can really do is try to build up maces or build up scalpels and hope for the best. I mean, we saw last game, Triple Mace did work really well, so they could do that. Go in with Triple Mace and just rip everything apart. But I don't see that happening. And Fire Pluck, I mean, they're taking some damage. There are the front lines, but that's fine. All they need to do is stay alive for another minute. And the Cyclops comes up. That should be able to deal enough damage to get through. Especially taking on the north side. It can wipe out all these pickets, no problem. That, to me, is the biggest issue, is getting rid of the pickets. If, if the north ridge can be freed from control of Team Mumble, then Team Pluck does have a decent shot at getting their economy built up again. And that should work. And then Fire Pluck just so afraid of losing their commander, which, I mean, to be fair, that is a legitimate fear. Their commander is the only thing keeping this thing, keeping this entire firebase up and running. If the commander goes down, that firebase cannot continue. Because what will end up happening is that there's no real worker that will come in here that's strong enough or tough enough to be able to deal with whatever forces come in to try to harass it. And then the fireplace goes. That's usually what happens. If the commander dies that's up front, building up some stuff, the base they're building is dead. And given that Fire Pluck is basically running an entire proxy-based strategy, yeah, their commander is pretty much the last line of defense here. So I do understand their concern. At the same time, I don't see a whole lot of forces coming in that are going to stop them. I mean, the Flails are a good choice, because they will stop the Ravens from coming in and harassing. So put Flail combined with maybe a Penetrator, or sorry, a Lance, rather. Which at this stage, pretty easy for Team Mumble to afford. That could work. I mean, at this point, if you look at this, everything's being set up. And we are seeing... We are seeing the squad! We are seeing Team Mumble finally go together into one group, or at least into two groups. Not sure why we have two groups here and Cannibal hasn't joined in, but... Almost. Almost got one Team Saniac. Hmm. Well, at any rate, this south side is being pretty well defended by 
two players at once. But yeah, Fireplex got this got this well secured. I don't I mean I don't see a huge problem yet, but there's the Lance I was talking about. And it looks like not much else is planned, but I mean Lance, Recluse, and nothing from Zaniac right now. They do I don't say Zaniac, nothing from the Cloaky Factory right now. They do have a okay assault force to get around the back, deal some damage, possibly avoid damage their way, but at the same time, no they don't because the Phoenixes. And the, the Flails were not in range, and there's that Cyclops again, so the Flails are the only line of defense against the Cyclops here. Well, that and the Lance. Now, Lance was built just in time, too, by the way. But yeah, that Cyclops is the main way that Team Block has to just win this game, to close it out. They do have a position of some strength. Certainly a economic advantage right now due to the reclaim, but yeah, their main positional strength right now is that Cyclops. They can just get rid of the forces that have been built up by Team Mumble. That should work. And now that the Flails are all dead, they could some Ravens could rush in and start dealing with things. Actually, the Phoenix is already going in to help deal with this entire force. That should be enough. One of the, the two commanders for the bottom side here of Team Mumble are doing their absolute best. Or at least their absolute darns are trying to make things work. But no, it's not working. The Lance goes down thanks to the combined Rogue and Phoenix Assault. Cyclops still needs a bit of repair to make it perfectly safe, but the Cyclops could probably just rush in there right now and kill everything. And no others are forthcoming yet. Probably will be soon enough, but still, more lances are forthcoming, and that is a bit of a threat. That Cyclops needs to attack now. Diamond is being very precious with that, and I can see why, but at the same time, they only have a few seconds before the next lance comes up, and that is the main threat of the Cyclops. So when that Cyclops attacks again, it's not going to be that much easier. If anything, it's going to be harder. The only thing kind of working in favor is that... Well, okay, maybe not. I was going to say that the Air Force can't get in, but I realized, no, the chainsaw is actually causing major headaches as far as that's concerned. Like, yeah, that's... That's a problem. So, no, I'd, I'd say no. The Phoenix can't really get in. The Lance is up. Cyclops going in and trying to do something. I mean, the Cyclops should be able to get some damage. Actually, the Lance is way out of position. What is the Lance doing? Lance, what are you doing? You're not going to hit the Cyclops from there. The Cy okay, this is this is it. Team Blux got it. Cyclops pushing in here, and Lance cannot really deal with it. Does not really have line of sight either, so at this point, he can get rid of a couple Minotaurs. Can't really get rid of the Cyclops. So, right now, that's it. That Lance now being completely surrounded, unable to get any value, and with that, the south side of Team Mumble is going to be completely destroyed, and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot left. Saniac calling the resign, and that is it. Team Mumble throws in the towel. So they go 2-2, and Team Pluck, I think, is undefeated. I'm going to double-check the results for a sec, but I feel like Team Pluck didn't actually take any losses. Let's see. 1-1-1, one, 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 and... Well, yep! 4-0 for Team Pluck. So they go into the elimination round with the best seed. While Team Mumble, on the other hand, goes in with the worst seed, so they will be fighting each other right off the bat. At least if I've gotten the, gotten the logic of it right, which I believe I did. So yeah, that will be up in a couple seconds, so stay tuned. We will have... Ah, where am I? Yeah, so we will have the elimination portion of the tournament in a couple minutes once I get that part set up. So stay tuned. Back with that. And... Yeah, get some tea or something. People were talking about how they... When I mentioned space tea, they kind of wish they got tea. Yeah, get go get some tea. Or whatever your drink of choice is. Maybe a couple minutes. So you got you got time to brew up a cup of tea. Anyway, be back in a bit. <laughs> 